Let me start off with a quick question. How close are you to your next job? <laughs> Not close enough? Does it feel like it's, it's far away? Does it feel like it's far off? Well, what if there was a way for us to bring that job closer? In fact, what if there was a way for us to pull that target nearer to you? Because when a target is closer to you, it's easier to hit, right? It's easier to make a layup than to make a half-court shot. And when you're making a layup, you've got a lot better chance of, of hitting because you're closer to the target. In order for us to get closer to that job, and not just any job, but that dream job, that job that's going to make you say, wow, the job that's going to make you say, wow, I have got to totally tweak that. Web 2.0, anybody? No? Okay, tough room. All right, that's fine. We got the, we got the Twitter jokes. The next job, the job that's going to make you say wow, depends on your ability to tell your story. The way that you are going to get to the job of your dreams is by having a conversation, right? And not just any conversation, but a strong conversation, a compelling conversation, a conversation that makes a prospective employer say, tell me more. The topic of our talk today is tell me more. And when someone says to you, tell me more, that means that they're interested. They're interested and they're curious. They want to know more about you, about what you have to offer and what you can do. So let's talk about how to have that kind of conversation. In fact, let's have a conversation where we choose the words that are going to help us most. But the first conversation we have to address, the first conversation that we have to talk about, is the conversation that's coming from the loudest voice in the room. And that's not my voice. That's the voice inside your head. Do you know what I'm talking about? Are you familiar? You know the voice inside your head. It's the voice that, that's the voice that says, you're not talented. Why would an employer want to talk to somebody like you? What could you possibly offer? What could you bring of any value? Has anyone in the room, do, do you know what I'm talking about? If you have a voice inside your head that gives you negative information from time to time, would you do me a favor, raise your right hand and raise it up high? Your other right hand, okay, your right hand, raise it up high. That's right, we all have that. Keep them up in the air if you don't mind. Keep them up in the air. We all have that voice inside of our head that gives us negative feedback from time to time. Now, if you have ever listened to that negative feedback and become ineffective because of it, would you raise your left hand up in the air? Would you put them up like this? Now, hold that pose for just a second. Look at that gesture. You know what that gesture is? It's surrender. That's exactly right. It's surrender. But watch this. Here's surrender. But I put a little bit of motion to it, and what have I got? Celebration. Celebration. That's what it looks like. Celebration. So from surrender to success, it just requires a little bit of motion, a little bit of energy in the right direction. Is it really that simple? Well, yes it is. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's a metaphor, which as I said to my web designer, what is a metaphor? Anyway, the web jump's not big today. Okay, we're pushing on. We're pushing on. So, it's a metaphor for the kind of actions that we need to take to take us from surrender, where we're frozen because of the ideas and the, the thoughts that are going through our head, and success, celebration. If we get motion going in the right way, we can create those kinds of opportunities. And they're based on a strong conversation. You know that voice inside your head? It's not the voice of God even though it thinks it is. <laughs> and if that voice inside your head is telling you what you should and shouldn't do, that you must do this and you must do that, let's make up our minds to not talk about masturbation. <laughs> the blue jokes work. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know. I like to take the high road. But different crap. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a feel for you. <laughs> make up your mind over the next few days, in fact, before Christmas, that if a negative thought comes into your head about your job search, if thoughts come into your mind that don't serve you, don't have that conversation, because you are the DJ inside your mind. You are the one who is controlling that conversation. It's not the voice of God. It's your voice. It's your voice. And make sure that the conversations that you have are powerful conversations. They're ones that are going to drive you forward in a positive light. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about how to have conversations in a positive light about your background. How do we make your background relevant? You know, if we could come up with a way, like a magnet, to draw that opportunity closer to us, those are the kinds of conversations that we should have so that we make our stories very powerful, that we make our experience matter. And isn't that the biggest challenge of job seekers? You know, I, I, just, I don't have the right experience. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're 22 or 62, your experience is wrong in some way or another, isn't it? 
right? But how do we tell our story in a way that's, that's compelling? How do we go through the job search process and approach it as what it really is? And that's a sales process. I mean, if you're in the job market, you are in sales. Now, I hate to say that to, to a room like this, because I know we've got a lot of marketing people here, right? And you know, that's, that's why you study marketing, is so you don't have to go into sales. <laughs> but the job search process is a sales process. If marketing is about creating and uh, identifying and creating needs, the job search process is about creating transactions. A transaction for you that will make you say, wow, wouldn't you agree? So, in that light, we're going to talk about how you can create powerful conversations, how you can deliver your story in the most compelling way. And I'll close this afternoon with some quick resume tips. In the time that we have here, I don't have time to drill in really deep and take a deep dive into resume tips, but I want to leave you with some thoughts and some ideas. Three quick things that you can do to boost your resume to the next level. And we'll start off, though, with a five-step process, a five-step process for having a powerful conversation in an interview. Ready? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's talk about telling your story. What do all great stories contain? Do we have any writers in the room that can tell us? What, what, are the, what is the one component of every great story? Great opening. Great opening? Thank you so much. Hey, were you speaking specifically? Or? Oh, that was a general comment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, a great opening? That's right. What else? What else do all great stories Strong contain? Strong characters. Strong characters? That's right. What else? Support, tension, and resolution. Tension and resolution, right? I, I would say that as conflict, right? Isn't, isn't there always, there's always something to overcome. So, <coughs> we have a great opening, we have, we have great characters, we have resolution, we have a conflict that has to be overcome. And a reason to care about the characters. And a reason to care about the characters, that's right. That that's right, that's exactly right. So, when the storyteller is you and the story is about you and you come home and your husband or wife says, so, how did the interview go? Don't you want to be able to answer that with confidence? To be able to say, well, I took a half-court shot, or no, it was a layup, it went great. To know, you know, are you winning, are you losing, where do you stand? Isn't that crucial? And if you know that in the interview process, while you're sitting there in front of the interviewer, you can make corrections. You can find out what it is that you may have left out. So, one of the worst feelings in the world is if your significant other says, so, how did the interview go? And you say, I don't know. I, I mean, we, I had a warm, there was a connection, but uh, I'm not sure. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. And in fact, our conversation today is about making you stronger and about approaching the interview process as a sales executive, as someone who is in a leadership position and knows how to take control of their destiny, bring their target closer using effective sales techniques. What matters most in the story is that resolution, is your ability to show how you have overcome obstacles in the workplace. And there are plenty of obstacles in the workplace. So, the contents of all great stories. Every great story is contained, the essence of all good drama, and that is conflict. Conflict. And the story starts off with a hero, that is you, right? You are the hero of your story. You are the storyteller and a participant, right? So. You are the hero. There is an obstacle. There is something that you have to overcome. Let's talk about what, what kind of obstacles can there be in, in the workplace. How about that one right up there? You see that? You recognize that? I went for some techie joke. I mean, we have Star Wars fans here, right? Of course. Okay, all right. Of course. Remember? Remember in Star Wars? Good stuff. What they had to overcome, right? The insurmountable odds. What is the Death Star in your personal story? What is it that you had to overcome? The conflict in action is what you want to focus on, and as Ben mentioned, a lesson comes from that action. That lesson results in a resolution. It demonstrates the hero's skills and abilities through his or her work with others. It's true that Luke Skywalker was the one that shot those two missiles that destroyed the Death Star, but there were a lot of folks that were involved in setting that up, right? So, remember all the elements of a good story, because you want to set it up with a great establishing shot, the story of you. The establishing shot is setting the scene. In great movies, we have panoramic views that let us know where we are. Think about the beginning of the sound of music. Sound of music. Remember in the hills of Austria, Julie Andrews standing on that hill, 
Anybody? Nobody? Oh, seven? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, technology, musical theater, I, you know, I'm just reaching out. Reaching out. Thanks for working with me. <laughs> Salzburg, Austria, that huge, epic shot where you come in on the mountains and there, there she is, and she's singing. The beginning of Star Wars. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, those words turn on their side. And they, it's fantastic. What is the establishing shot in your story? Well, my suggestion to you is that you don't use the mountains of Salzburg, Austria, or intergalactic camera work, but that you create your story with numbers. Set the stage with numbers. Numbers are the universal language. It doesn't matter whether you speak German or Chinese. If I hold my hand up like this, you know that I'm holding up a number that is two less than this and two more than that, right? So we set the stage with numbers. And sometimes for marketing people or people who are in different sorts of uh, positions, excuse me, if you're in engineering or something like that, it can be difficult to capture the numbers, the numbers. But they're crucial to talk about the context and scale. Where were you in the organization? Where was the organization at at the time when your story was taking place? Right? So that is crucial. What was going on at the time of the story? And then make that relevant. I gave this presentation, and I had a gentleman ask me, he said, you know, what if something happened in a story that happened eight years ago? Is it still relevant? And I said, it depends on how you tell the story. It depends on how you connect it to your target and bring it closer to you. You can tell stories from eight years ago, from 15 years ago. My daughter was born 14 years ago. Guess what? I'm still a father. <laughs>